Okay, and then what we what we want to do today for the first two or three minutes, um, if you have not already done so, um, is that we're going to have you go to our course. So I'm going to give everybody a second to navigate to the course so that you're there. And then in the upper right hand corner, you'll see your profile. So I'm going to click on my profile. Let me move our screen out of the way, move zoom over here. And um, <clears throat> under account settings, when you click on that, it opens it up and then you'll see a line that says edit profile. So we're actually going to give you just a couple of minutes here to finish up your profile if you haven't done that. So really the key parts are about you, which is very short, and then your location, your role. Some of you have already done that already um, as vice principal or the equivalent. Um, don't need to worry about any personal links. And then very briefly, if you just want to type up a quick introduction for yourself, and then we won't worry here about the playlists or groups or anything like that, just those things. So if you want to take two or three minutes to complete that, engage, go for it. And yes, Robert, I will do that in a moment. Thank you, Jonathan. And also maybe if you just wanna, when you're done, if you just wanna um, hit or type done in the chat um, after you have saved. Nice, excellent. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Larissa. Thank you, Ken. Got it. Thank you, Barry. Oh, nope. Okay. I'll let you back in when you're ready, Barry. Oh, you're actually, maybe he's just talking about the platform. Denali is done. Thank you. Thank you, Akash. Serena's done. Should be just a couple more. Okay. So as as everybody just finishes that part up. Um, okay. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. So let's see, did we, is she still here? Yes, she is. So I just want to take a second to introduce Susanna Johnson. Um, I'll let Susanna introduce herself. Go, Susanna. Thank you, Josh. And thanks, everybody, for giving me a couple of minutes in your time today. Um, I'm just here as helpful support staff. I am um, here in Honolulu as well and um, spent most of my teaching classroom time at Assets High School and developed a 100% individualized program through that. And have since left the classroom to help other schools with all of their innovation practices and um, various different projects. So I'm with the What School Could Be team, uh, helping with the community and how things happen there. So any and all things community, you're welcome to just come to me and ask when it comes to 
courses or groups or resources or how to do things logistically, I am happy to do that. I host office hours every week. I do an introductory course once a month that is um, geared towards helping you build personalized professional development plans, which I know you're are part of this work and what you're doing here. But my entire role in this capacity is just to support Josh and Ann and Robert in this endeavor and how they support you. And then just to be another sounding board anytime anybody needs um, for any Thing that you need. Anything awesome. else, Josh, that I left off? Uh, Susanna is very much an expert in individualized learning. Um, and so if you are interested in that topic, um, it's pretty easy to direct message her on the platform. Um, and um, she's awesome. Thank you, Susanna. Okay, so let me share my screen again. everybody over and then I'm going to start at the top and present. <clears throat> okay, so assuming everybody can see the screen okay, and I'll keep an eye out for Barry who's going to be coming back in again. Um, so today's our first official class session. Um, so this first slide just kind of lays out what the format for today will be. Um, we've done our housekeeping and our five minutes to finish our profiles. So thank you much for doing that. Um, we're going to start with a discussion about the article that you read from Boy Business Magazine. And thank you to the many of you who have already jumped onto the What School Could Be platform and commented on that article. Um, that was a, a, a brief flurry of comments, which was pretty epic to be part of as it was unfolding. So um, thank you for that. Um, we're going to take a few minutes to have that discussion in small groups. When we come back out of the small groups, we're gonna be spending um, the rest of the time, um, sorry, let me admit Barry again. We're gonna be spending the rest of the time uh, divided between two things. One is the start of the process of your, what we call the school impact project, which is your year long project that you're gonna be working on. And then um, the second half of that time will be spent with Robert um, on strengths. So what we're going to do right now, whoops, sorry, let me go back, is I'm going to come out of share and let me go ahead. What we want to do is to give you um, a few minutes in your small groups to actually talk about the article that you read. Um, I know that some of the comments have already been posted already, but this is a chance to continue to get to know each other and to talk about this reading, which is a a big meta overview of what was happening in the state um, back in 2019. Um, and eventually this pandemic will come to an end and we will continue on with the work that was happening back then. A lot of amazing innovative work has happened during, the, during COVID. Um, and so we wanted to give you guys a chance to talk about that. So let me go ahead and organize the breakout rooms. Give me one sec. Okay. Okay, so the rooms are going to open and off you go. Amy, did you did you get a
Hi. Hi. <laughs> They're coming back. Hey. So Barry, Barry had some technical issues and then he kind of like left. I don't know. She, I don't know. And then um, Narissa's child stopped by. So then she walked. <laughs> so she, so oh, no. then I'm like, okay. <laughs> and you're by yourself. I oh, know. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. So that's why I was like, all right, I just go back because yeah. I've been here by myself. How, how did it feel to, when you read the article, to see that section about Dave and about your school? Pretty oh cool, my gosh. Right? I, it's funny because I swear every couple pages, I was like, I know that person. I know that person. And I was oh, like, oh, nice. What's going on with this article? Were you, were you at Hongwanji? Have you been there? Were you there when the article yeah. was written? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, we're gonna wait until everybody comes back in here. Did we get, uh, I don't know if we got Barry back, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm here, Josh, but for some reason I'm having issues with my, my cameras. Okay, that's okay. Your yeah. voice is all that matters, Barry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen here real quick and we're gonna move on to the next section here. Okay, everybody can see the screen okay? Thumbs up? Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Back one. Okay. There we go. Okay. So, again, as I mentioned before, um, the rest of our time together today is going to be spent on two things. One is the development of the project, what we call the school impact project, and the other is going to be strengths. Um, so, first, we're going to deal with the school impact project. Um, so I'm actually I'm going to um, read this first paragraph to you, beginning in the first semester now. Um, whoop, wow. Google Slides really jumps around a lot. But accelerating over the second half of the course, participants will develop and execute a relevant and authentic project grounded in a guiding question and participate in several rounds of problems of practice, sometimes known as tuning protocol or protocols. Participants will use their blogs to describe and reflect on their projects. Course facilitators, executive coaches, and participants, principals, um, and heads will engage in the development of an impact dashboard where the school impact project data will be collected, analyzed, and shared appropriately. So what we wanted to do now, um, the, the last thing that we wanna do is to plant any ideas in your head about what your project should be. It's important that you hear that. This is gonna be something that will be entirely of your construction. But what we did wanna do is we wanted to show you one example of what a school project looks and sounds and feels like. Um, so by way of introduction, um, last November, I uh, finished my second uh, documentary film. This one tells the story of five Hawaii public schools um, who are doing some really interesting and innovative work. Um, I made this film in partnership with Waianae Sea Rider Productions, um, which uh, was one of the schools featured in the article that you read. Um, and what I'm going to show you today is just one of the eight chapters that's in this film. It's five minutes and 20 seconds long. And it actually features um, something that happened at Waimea Canyon Middle School. And one of our 10 participants here, Serena Cox, was actually at Waimea Canyon Middle when this happened. So I'm gonna show this uh, film to you. Again, the purpose of this is to just kind of give you um, a look and a feel and a sense of what a school project um, was all about or could be all about. Twenty percent is all about collaboration and using design thinking. You have to like work with people and share ideas, and I feel like that's really important for your future because you know there's not only gonna meet you. There's seven other billion people in this world, so you need to communicate and share your ideas. And if you want this to be actually global and like governmental, a lot of people say that you should start small, and I do believe in that too. But 
it's just not also just where you live. There's bigger problems outside of you. So why not help everybody instead of just helping like a certain group of people? I think the biggest challenge we have is breaking them of eight years of structured education, right? And then asking them to be self-directed learners that they've never been given the chance to do before. Here's a Chromebook. Be a self-directed learner. Go. Me, the foundation of innovation is passion. What do you care about? And a lot of these kids have never been asked that question. A memorable learning experiences also include some sort of connection between teacher and student, student and student, student and community, um, a feeling of, of the student having created something and being a part of a greater whole. What are the kind of thoughtful innovations, again in the context of small steps leading to big change, that will affect, sometimes dramatically affect, a student's ability to get good at something that matters? And students also have the mindset that, you know, I've been told what to do my whole mm -hmm. life and I don't know how to think for myself. And I think these steps that we've taken the last three years have hopefully helped to shift that mindset for both our teachers and our students. And I look at teaching, I look at innovation, I look at 20% time the way that I'm doing is, what is your purpose? I keep telling them, this is not a project. This is a mission. It started three years ago when we said, let's stop school the last week of school and we're going to do a design week. Specifically, the block between 11.45 to 1 o'clock every day. That's designated free time called 20% time. So the way we divided our 20% time was having the students to look at those global goals. They were then able to choose the one, their first priority, which one was they were most passionate about, felt like they had the most that they could offer in trying to solve some of those problems that are attributed to that, that goal. There's no formal grading. There's no formal credit. It ends every day with relentless reflection, and that's become a phrase here on our campus. We're the last 10 minutes of every 71 block every day, right, that we have for 20% time, ends in written reflection that all students and teachers should be doing. What I define as what's important about education, which is skills. So to me, a test score, yes, it's a measurable thing. It's important to do well on that test. But when I look at my kids, they've done good if they have left my classroom with certain skills. Essential skills, social and emotional skills. My group currently for our 20% time is trying to tackle this idea of microplastics in the ocean. That's, I mean, it's a huge problem and there's no way that one of these kids is going to come up with an idea today, but they might tomorrow. As they're diving into their research and getting into their topics like marine debris and ocean acidification and overfishing, and but they're making these broad connections to everything else in their life mm -hmm. and these global goals, but really it's about life and humanity. When we're doing this huge mural, we're now we're fusing in writing, we're fusing in interviews, we're doing math, we're doing art, we're doing paint, and neither one of our teachers are artists. This is a great way for us to bring back your culture on campus, to do something visual for us to do our skills, and it's going to be handprints of not just them, but the community. But if they're learning their content in a way that is purposeful, that's meaningful to them, that they get that it's exciting for them, then our test scores are going to go up. They're going to want to be lifelong learners. They're going to increase and strengthen their academic identity. Because ultimately the whole purpose of our 20% time is how can we make the world a better place. And, and the process should never end. You're never at the end of a PBL unit, you're never at the end of the design thinking, you're never at the end, so it's continuous. So what's driving it? The students ultimately. It is though also, of course, the staff, the administration, a custodian, the community, parents, anyone who can join our community, we more than welcome to help us get to the best place for our students. Okay, so, whoops, I think I went too far. Did I go too far? No, nope. Robert, this is your part. So 
we're going to, again, go back into our small groups. And Robert, you're going to queue up what we're going to do here. Yeah, so that was one example of what a project could be. And eventually, you're going to settle on what your project will be. And that project might have some perimeter around it or things you can do or may need to wait to do. But before we get down into the weeds, uh, let's go and look up out into the horizon, into the blue sky. So we're gonna do a brief blue sky session where basically if you were given a magic wand or a genie's lamp and you could make a wish, what would be the fundamental impact change that you would bring to your school? You had everything, all the resources, all the okays. There was gonna be no resistance uh, this is our moment to dream. Like to see like where you are on a blue sky idea, a hope and dream for your school, no holes barred. Share that with uh, with your group right now. Okay. So hopefully we can all get back into our rooms. Uh, let me let me actually change this because then Ali, you ended up. Um, Let me see how I can do this, sorry. I may do some moving around once you get into your groups. The ladies are much chattier. Yes, they are. <laughs> Okay, it looks like we're all back. Um, if you if you didn't, uh, well, you wouldn't have known, uh, but the first person to speak, the young kid who uh, sp spoke first in that clip is actually Serena's daughter, um, who is she much looks older so now. <laughs> she looks so young, that was such a long time ago. Yes, okay, all right. So let's move on back to this slide right here. And Robert, you're going to be talking about big picture thinking and project design. Take it away, Robert. Uh, we just want to show you 
kind of uh, the first draft of our project planner that you'll be getting soon to start putting your mind around the impact project. So we've been working on this for the last couple of weeks and want to just give you a snapshot of what it looks like so you can start to get your mind around what you need to start planning for and thinking about when it comes to your impact project. So Josh, if I could get the screen. Yes, stand by. All yours. And Josh and Ann, uh, feel free to, to jump in, but I'm just gonna, this is just a preview. Uh, it's a living document that we're still editing, but just to give you an idea of the sections that you'll be thinking of. Uh, first, just some information. You know that uh, you can absolutely and are encouraged to create a team uh, when it comes to this project. Uh, it does not have to be a solo endeavor. Uh, so if you decide to bring teammates on to design and, and implement this project, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, you'll be listing your project goals. And when it comes to the impact, uh, you can choose one or more of these. Are you going to build something, inspire change, innovate? Then like in uh, project-based learning, this there will be this driving question, this overarching question, problem, challenge that you are looking to uh, to to solve through implementation of an impactful idea or product. Then the actual project itself, some questions around that. Looking at what skills you already are bringing to the table and it's good to already begin to think, well, what do I need to know? What research do I need? Who do I need to to bring on uh, as far as new skills are concerned. So this is the section on the actual project. How will you measure the success of your project? And there will be a data dashboard to show the ongoing success and changes as you implement. The next part is on your passion, directly related to this project. And then we have the what school could be section. So we've taken the five major areas uh, within what school can be and ask you to, how will your project mobilize your community? How will your project enhance or promote student-driven learning? How will your project include and demonstrate real world changes? How will your project use authentic assessments? And how will your project include, ensure, and create a caring and connected community? So that's direct relation to why we're here and what school could be. Uh, next, what support are you going to need and how are you going to manage your time? The next section is the actual public exhibition, which is occurring in June of 2022, when we all get together at the end of this end of the line. Uh, already start thinking about that public exhibition. And what of course is very important is ongoing reflection. We have a lot of questions that you just need to think about as you're doing the projects uh, and towards the end of the project. Reflection is ongoing. It doesn't happen at the end after you're done. So there's a lot of questions there around reflection. The other thing we're just going to test and hope that uh, works is that once you submit your form and have started to answer questions, uh, we believe that this can be an on uh, a living document. So you're constantly updating it, making changes uh, as the weeks and months uh, go on. So that is the planning form. And I guess, yeah. Can you, can you go back up to the top again? Yeah. Um, so I'm just actually going to take a second here 
um, to read this paragraph for everybody out loud. Um, today, you will start the process of designing, building, and implementing a relevant and authentic school impact project, which is one of the core elements of your investing in human capital, what school could be leadership course. Grounded in a guiding question, your project will have a lasting impact on students and your greater school community. As you leave base camp and head up the mountain, know that you have in your backpack your relationships with your principal or head, your executive coaches, your course facilitators and special guests, and your faculty and staff. Most especially as you develop your school impact project, think about your relationship with the learners on your campus and in your extended community. It is for them that you do this work. As part of the process of school impact project development, course facilitators, executive coaches, and participants, principals will engage in the development of an impact dashboard where the school impact project data will be collected, analyzed, and shared appropriately. And in a second, Anne is actually going to elaborate on that um, to a greater extent. Um, so Barry, uh, thank you for your question. Um, and I, I think that that answers the paragraph plus what I said answers about what we mean by your teammates, right? As we go forward. And I, I, I think Barry, your, your question may resonate with everyone because you have two kind of support, two, two kind of support teams, right? Number one will be those that will help you in guiding your thinking and reflection about how you design your impact project. So that would be your principal, right? Your coaches and, and um, each other, okay? The other thing will be as part of your implementation of this project, you may have a school team that you're gonna work with. And that school team may be, you know, like a, a, a team that works with you in designing um, the implementation of this project because you're gonna need support, you're gonna need buy-in, you're gonna need, you know, um, that team that's gonna help you to um, start to make sure that everybody's on board. If it's like grade level chairs, or if it's like, um, you know, um, counselors, depending on what your project is. So again, the team is twofold. One is your implementation team that's at your school level. The other is your support team that will help you with the designing phase of your project. Um, the other thing that will happen is we want to be sure you have enough time to go through the thinking questions in the design of your impact project. And so we're looking at it being like you've got September, you can talk to your coaches, your principal, look at your, your school plan and see what really you've identified as priorities within that um, plan for this year. The other piece will be actually transforming that design you know, that, that design planning form into a strategic implementation plan. So come around um, October, we're gonna give you another thing to think about filling out that will actually be pretty much like, how are we gonna do the implementation of this project? What's the rationale? So you've got all this thinking about why you're passionate about this. Now you gotta create a rationale around why I wanna do this. This is your elevator speech to everybody about why this is so important for us to do and why you need everybody to be part of this, this implementation of um, your project. Second part would be, so what is your general purpose? Why do you want to do this project? How is it going to uh, make a difference in school for kids, for teachers, for community? Mm -hmm. Then the third thing would be, so, um, so how are we going to be sure we're measuring this impact? Um, you're going to look at things like um, implementation data. How do we know that we've implemented this in a way that's going to make sure we get to the end? And what's our student impact data? How did it really impact what students are, are um, getting out of school? And then really starting to think about um, uh, creating that dashboard using that data. And so you notice in the slides, it says, you gotta think about what are your outcomes and how are you gonna know you've been successful? What are those things you're gonna measure? And it can be measured through surveys, right? It could be formative assessments, it can be authentic assessments and also summative assessments. But you have to think about what's gonna be able to tell your truest story about this project at your school. 
Okay. And then we will also not just leave you in the deep end of the pool. So we have um, Joe uh, Rabin, who is from California. He has a company called, oh, it's um, Jess, what is it? In something to inspire. Yes. Yeah. Eye yeah. to yeah. eye. Eye to eye. eye. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he is going to be working with us to do uh, work one on one with you, so that thinking about data and how you can start to create your data dashboard around this this project. Um, we're looking at bringing him on board maybe in early October. So you have to start thinking about uh, this. How are you going to create your strategic implementation plan so that when he comes and starts talking to you about the different options for measuring and, and looking at success, you already have an idea of what your uh, impact project will be like. Okay, so um, again, you know, you can, you can uh, start with this design thinking. You got to start by pulling things in your head. What is your passion? How would you work with students on something like this? That's what we're trying to get you to see. What's your passion about education in your schools, in your community? And, and how can you use that big sky reflection thinking to actually start to pull something out that's going to be meaningful to you and, and something you want to continue to work on? So um, again, we're just starting this. This is an introduction to you. Um, Josh, Robert, and myself, we're always available to answer any further questions. Um, and, and again, you know, you have a lot of resources for that design support for this month and um, really looking to, to be excited about um, where this is gonna go for the rest of the year. Okay, Josh. Yep. And so the final bullet on this slide has to do with something called the innovation playlist. Uh, Robert referenced it when he walked you through um, a quick look at the planning document that we're going to be sending out to you that you can use as your living document to begin planning, designing, and, and developing, and fully planning your project. Um, the innovation playlist is part of what school could be, and we're going to be um, using elements of it in our course sessions um, to give you something to sort of orient yourself to the various facets of the diamond that will be your project. Um, and so we'll cover that in, in the weeks and months to come. So I don't wanna go any deeper on that. Yeah. So I think probably at this point, Anne, it would probably be a good idea if we pause for a second here um, and give everybody a chance to ask questions or make a comment here before we take a break and move over into the next phase, which is gonna be about strengths. Are, are we all happy? Could you tell your face that? <laughs> you know, remember now, this is exciting. I mean, you know, I know I retired after 42 years, but I could tell you that this is really inspiring me. All of you inspire me when I look at your faces and I, I can see wheels turning and, and you guys really have a passion for what's at your school and, and your kids. So that's where we want to go with this. So any questions you have now for any of us, please let us know um, so we can we can take it. Otherwise, we'll, we'll take a break. So we'll wait a couple minutes. Who has a question? Or a comment. Or a comment. There was a little bit of, of if I may, just that we had some conversation and, and I've, I've been hearing it from people all over the, the world about difficulties with thinking about innovation in the midst of, you know, just like barely treading water um, and just wanted to what Josh was, was talking about with the playlist and different things like seek inspiration everywhere you can get some videos get on Twitter or on the innovation playlist and look for things that might help to inspire whatever you're, if you don't have a big idea already for your project that that's a great way to jumpstart some of that inspiration process just maybe if you have thank you Suzanne it's really nice having you on board and they can see your face and they know how helpful you're going to be and that they're not going to be afraid to contact you for just short sessions on, on thinking about things. So everybody, that's the purpose. You're gonna have a lot of resources, so you have to use them, right? Any other comments? 
Any thoughts, wishes, wonders, worries? You can tell us uh, that you're excited about this and it's got you thinking. <laughs> I'm super excited for when you guys tell us how to achieve those blue skies with unlimited funding and resources <laughs> for when you give us the answer to that one. I'm anxiously awaiting my principal right behind me. <laughs> oh, there What's he up, is. Paul? How's it? <laughs> I swear these principals all want to join in, you know, that's going to be another class, right? <laughs> Jillian, yeah, ho hopefully we can the get, door for a while. <laughs> hopefully we can get maybe, you know, six, seven or eight million dollars in CARES Act or, or COVID <laughs> money, and then we'll be able to distribute it to all of you. You'll have whatever blue skies you want. I love that as a plan. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Susanna, you have to take off. There she goes. Okay. All right, shall we, shall we do our break? Okay, so we're gonna take a five minute break, which is perfect. We're right on time and Robert. Um, Robert, it gives you, I think what you need. Um, as we come back from the break, we're gonna be digging into the strengths part of it. So five minutes, uh, feel free to turn off your cameras and mute and we'll see you in five.
Hey, Josh. Hi. I just added to next steps, personal strength goal, if it's not done today. Where, at the, at the end of the deck? Yeah, oh, next steps. It. I just yeah. added it in case. Okay. In case we don't get to it or it's probably long enough session. So we'll gauge it. Got it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again, Robert, and we'll go back to that slide. Okay, we'll give everybody another minute to come back. Uh, well, actually it looks like everybody is back. Barry had to um, attend an open house, a virtual open house tonight. So um, he will not be part of this last part of the session, which is fine. Okay, so welcome back, everybody. Oh, what happened here? Let's go back here. There we go. Okay, so um, the last section of today um, is going to be devoted to your Strengths Finder assessment. Um, which most of you have uh, been doing with Robert. Um, so in your base camp backpack, you're going to have your relationship with your principal, the support of your executive coach, the support of your facilitators, that's us, and your strengths finder assessment, as well as many other supports. Um, so to take you further with strengths finder, here's Robert. He's going to be talking about strengths based team uh, strengths based team simulation strengths-based uh, case study and developing your strengths-based goal. So Robert, I'm gonna stop sharing and so that you can share your screen. Okay. Everybody see this okay? Yes. And see. Yep. Somebody, somebody thumbs up. Yes. You can, it's on, Josh. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, we wanted to just elaborate a little further on the strengths work we've done so that it can hopefully continue. Um, a lot of people have done strengths. They kind of do their one shot. They take the survey, uh, they learn their strengths, maybe read about it. But we're kind of hoping that that strengths can really go into your backpack and be part of your uh, toolbox for, for moving forward. And I'm just gonna take you through a more elaborated session today. Um, I did something like this a couple of weeks ago for about four hours. So this is gonna be condensed into a very, very short amount of time. But uh, if you want to know more, if you, you, you're interested in, in learning more about what we're gonna do today, feel free to contact me. So, um, as Josh said, we're going to, uh, I've, wor I've already met with most of you, not all of you, but most of you to do your one-to-one -one strengths communication session. And today we're gonna look at all of your strengths together as if you were a team, which you are, you're a team. And we're gonna look at our team, uh, not including, I don't have um, Josh, Ann and myself in the mix. It's just you guys. Um, we're just going to look at a quick case study to see how you might approach uh, a project uh, based on strengths, and that's going to be the participating section, number two. And then number three, we'd like you to create for yourself a strength-based goal uh, so that this is something that you could talk about with your coach or your principal uh, or both. So just as a quick review, and uh, for some of you, this will be uh, new be in what we would be going on over with your one-to-one -one communication session. Um, 
we mentioned before that there are four domains which the 34 strengths are placed. And they are very distinct uh, in far as where your superpowers, your talents, your strengths lie. Remembering that the first section is the executing. And the reason I wanna bring this up again and is because after I show you us as a team, I've done a little bit of data drop to, to look at what kind of a team you are based on the four domains. And every team is different when you look at the strengths. So remembering that the executing strengths are people who roll up their sleeves, head down, get into the mud, doing the action part of anything. These strengths in that domain are very clearly what it takes in the moment. Uh, and some of them, like an arranger, is somebody who when anything happens, they're like the conductor of an orchestra, getting all the different instruments to play in unison. They have this, this incredible talent of arranging people and bringing people together. The influencing domain, I say, are people that walk around with a portable soapbox or stage. These are people that love and are very good at influencing others, getting people to action, uh, and often these people are very uh, commanding and they have self-assurance. They're very competitive. And I was telling Josh and Ann earlier today, I've never worked with a group of uh, 10 people uh, that have so much woo <laughs> as you guys have, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, the next category, the relation building is the softer strength. It doesn't mean it's soft. It means that you're very powerful people in relating and making people feel unique and special, giving people encouragement and nurturing them. And lastly, the strategic thinking versus executing with sleeves rolled up, head down. Strategic thinking are people who are head up, looking out at the horizon, always one step ahead. Within each domain, there is a kind of more of a surface level and deeper level. For example, in the strategic thinking, I am an ideator and a futurist. I'm very much thinking about ideas around the future, but I need analytical intellection and input people to get me to stop for a moment and think more deeply about that idea. And I don't, I have an idea, I can see it, I can visualize it, and I wanna put it right into action. Uh, that's worked more times than it hasn't, but I wish I had analytical people around me and executing people around me because I personally have no executing strengths at all. So this is our team, our cohort. Um, uh, for those of you who have, who have sent me your um, results. And I am, going to go through each person individually, but since some of you have already gone through the session with me, I would love uh, a somebody who is a risk taker to introduce themselves through their strengths based on the one-to-one -one session that we had, simply by saying, hi, I'm Robert, and my superpowers, my talents, my strengths lie here. Uh, we can see the domains, but, uh, and I know that some of you have actually done this before. So if, if you wouldn't mind, rather than me introducing you, which is what I did a couple of weeks ago, I had a school board, a 12 member school board, and I went through each person, introduced them to the others, and there was a lot of really interesting reactions uh, 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 around the group. So much so that the ninth person uh, recorded it so he could uh, show other people how accurately you get to know people through their strengths. And so he recorded me introducing him to the group. So could I ask somebody if, and if you, you don't have to do it, but it'll stop me from talking the whole time. Could somebody introduce themselves based on their five top strengths. Tell us a little bit about more yourself, but please, everything related to these five strengths. Do I have a volunteer?
I can go. I don't awesome. mind. I don't mind. I'll help you out so you don't have to talk. Um, I've had some experience with strength, so I can sort of lend it. Uh, I'm Jess Matzik. I'm a strategic maximizer who has lots of ideas. I like to win others over and activate crowds. Um, pretty strategic and uh, my thinking where it, it becomes frustrating and it's all, even though it's my biggest strength, it's probably my biggest fault. And the reason I think that is because I will become antsy and uh, in meetings when I already have kind of the end result, but everybody we're waiting for the table to catch up on the problem. Um, that's a, a really bad habit of mine. So I've gotten better at um, listening and waiting and rerouting the team to get to, get to some different um, solutions. Ma the maximizer one is um, pretty much like to do a lot of things very well at once. Um, uh, Robert, you can help me out on that one. I think that's correct. Um, like to maximize people. I like to maximize ideas. And um, the ideation was new. So in 2013, I took this uh, Strength Finders assessment and strategic maximizer and woo were all in my top three, but ideation and activator kind of moved down from my top 10 into here. So this is kind of a new strength um, that I'm not as used to, but this is the type this is uh, lots of ideas going on in the head while we're trying to strategically plan. The wooing, I don't know where we get this from. Uh, I think Robert told us we're just kind of born with it, um, probably because I'm the only girl in my family, maybe. I don't know how that happened. But um, had I, I had a hard time in school. Um, I was usually out in the hallway or in trouble at recess, uh, never really got along. Um, was usually, you know, wondering the teachers were very frustrated because I usually won the students over and um, it was 20 against one at that point. And then activator, um, I like to see the ideas come alive. Um, I like to get started and um, I activate crowds by giving lots of praise and having um, real solid relationships and usually can see the strengths in others fairly quickly. Robert, was that all right? That was awesome. And just Jessica, the thing about a maximizer is you're the kind of person, if people say, well, how are we possibly going to do that? We don't have the resources. Um, it's a good idea, but how are we actually going to make that work? You're the person with your woo and your activator will influence them to say, you know, I can basically, you know, it's the old uh, Jessica is great at the give me lemons, I'll make lemonade kind of person. Uh, but even so far as she can probably, you know, get water out of a stone and gold out of straw. Uh, because it's not the question that she can, it's that she makes you feel that confidence when you're in her aura to say, I can, we can make this happen, we can do it. Um, and so that's the maximizer strength. Um, it's, it's not necessarily that you have to do it, though you probably will, but it's a question of people who may say, how are we possibly going to do this? You will influence them uh, in a way that they can feel that they can. Uh, Jessica, let me ask you a question. With this uh, ideation activator, because you and I both have that same combo, um, where would you bring Jorge into the mix? Look at, you see Jorge. Jorge is, interestingly, four out of his top five strengths are strategic, and two of them are deeply strategic. And then he has this view of the future and always looking like, I know we did that yesterday, but if we just think about it, we might be able to improve upon that and make something even better out of it. But knowing what you know about strengths, Jessica, with your ideation, like, as you said, half, you know, two minutes in and you've got three ideas and they're probably great. Where would you bring Jorge into the mix with his intellection and input? I would probably ask Jorge if, um, if these ideas were solid, right? Like if, if they were going to be executed uh, well enough and um, have him do maybe the deep thinking 
about the ideas. So Jorge, when you're initially positive about something, are you the person that will also say, um, kind of put your hand up and say, I need a little bit more time. I'd like to research this a little bit more. I think we need a little bit more information. I need to talk to a couple of people. Is that you? Yeah, I'm, I usually need time for ideas to like marinate. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you're asking questions to be obstinate or to be against it. It means that once you are in, you're in. Because you're pretty convinced based on your input and intellection strengths. Yeah. Does that and make Robert, sense? Robert, I heard that loud and clear in our small group discussion with Jorge when, and it actually caught my attention uh, when he talked about wanting to do further research on some of the ideas that were coming up for him when he read the HB article. So I, I, this is very cool to see that triangulation. And there's two ways that, that Jorge does this. Number one, he, he is not afraid to raise his hand and say, I think we need more data, we need more time, we need to read up on that. But the intellection strength is that he is a very deep thinker. And uh, thinking deeply is something that we need once in a while, especially these days when we, the pendulum is going back and forth. We need these intellection people who are saying, it's a great idea, but we need to think about it before we implement it, because if we don't, it may just be a great idea. Um, Jorge, as we haven't done our session together, I'd like to tell you that you and I share three strengths, a strategic, futuristic, and relator. And I'll ask you one question, and it's, um, we don't have another relator here. We have other ways of we have relationships, but Jorge, are you, will you just like wake up one day and say, I need to call so-and-so, get in touch with so-and-so. I was thinking about them yesterday. And when a lot of people might think about somebody yesterday, you're the kind of person who will actually get in touch with them or make contact. Is that true? It is, yes. And do you have friends from like 30 years ago that are still very much a part of your life because you've worked hard at maintaining those relationships? I do, I like from elementary, I still do. Exactly, because this relator strength where some people lose touch, the relator gets great joy and is actually very good at connecting people through relationships. Um, you have, can everybody see Larissa? Where Jorge has his top four strengths are strategic, Larissa's top four strengths are relation building. And they're all these incredibly nurturing, growing, emoting, um, but she's driven by this ability that doesn't matter what you throw at her, she'll say, we can make this work. You can make this work. I have confidence that we will adapt to whatever we're given. Larissa, can you talk about your, if you don't mind, about your relation building strengths for a moment? Um, well, interesting enough, I took the same strengths finders test three or four years ago, I think. And all like for Jessica, I had all the same ones except for one. And the new one, actually, Robert, sorry, I told you the wrong thing. Last time I had restorative, this time the new one that I had was the ideation one. So I'm really excited to start exploring that side of myself because it's new in the past couple of years. But I mean, for myself, I've just, I've always been a people person. I love being around people. I love working with others. Um, I love collaborating. I, I always get these crazy ideas in my head and then I know I need a team to help me execute, you know, and hash out the fine details. I'm very big picture, but when it comes to like the, the smaller details and stuff, I need somebody to help me with that. So I just, I really try to be positive because I know what it's like to be around people that are negative and bring you down and that's no fun. So I don't ever wanna be that person. And I just, I'm really just kind of go with the flow in, 
my professional life and out in my personal life. You know, I understand things happen and we got to make adjustments and just keep going. And again, I just, I like to be with people and I like, I guess, accomplishing things with people and, you know, just having that outcome at the end. So. Could you let people know, and we talked about this, you know, you don't have an executing strength in your top five. Does that mean that you leave the executing to other people? Or how do you execute using those strengths that you have? Well, I, I definitely um, share with people what I feel their strength is or bring out the strength in them and have, have them kind of take over where they're better than I am at doing that and just continue to encourage them and stuff and um, hopefully inspire them. And that's, that's, I need them as much as they need me kind of thing. And again, that's where the collaboration comes into place. And I just, I know that others do things better than I do and at this vice versa. And that's what I think makes up a good team. Exactly. And what you have is this developer strength where uh, if you are going to implement something, you need that coach behind everyone who is nurturing and growing, giving people confidence, um, creating and maintaining that positive atmosphere. I mean, you have that just across the board, as you can see. Just as a little side note, um, I'm coaching Larissa and Jessica. They're both newly emerged ideators. I'm a very seasoned ideator. Watch out world after we, we talk about this ideation strikes. Uh, it's gonna be fun. Um, Serena, I hope you don't I hope you don't mind. I'm just gonna touch on everybody. I have an incredible new love and respect for the context strength, especially in these days when we are looking at innovating in our schools and moving forward. Uh, Serena, what is it about this context strength that is perfect for this moment we're in now, not only in our group, but in education? Um, I, I think what really it kind of brings up like a this conversation I was having about the article that we read. The article was dated March of 2019. So being the context and that being one of my strengths, um, I kind of like to research and review and look back at the, the past and look at things that either worked or didn't work and how to bring some of those experiences into the future. Um, so as far as what we're talking about now and that uh, thinking about that article and the things that it was touching on and now thinking about where we're at or where we've come or what we're going through related to COVID um, and thinking about the experiences that I've had prior to COVID, how that can play out now in the future, learning from those experiences. Um, being able to gain that insight, that knowledge of kind of that path that I've, you know, you've already kind of been able to go through. So that context is really about looking back and seeing the patterns that maybe have come out um, from prior events and, you know, just kind of understanding the history and how it relates to certain situations. Thank you. You said that beautifully. I mean, we, we need in every group right now, this context approach to our strategy where there is so much that we have already accomplished and so much that we've learned and so much that we can use. It's a lot different, isn't it, Serena, in our conversation? It's not that you're living in the past, is that you are learning from the past and making a better future out of it. Exactly. And I, I mean, I was just saying this in our group. I mean, it's like, re I read that article in 2019, but reading it now, it just has so much more power behind it to read it now, knowing what we have been through over the past almost two years. Thank you. Now that we have Denali, you can see Denali is very heavy executing strengths and influencing. This is, again, a really interesting combination that we don't see very often. Um, but being that you're one of the we have few executors in our group. And then Denali is top two with some very significant executing strengths. Denali, could you just explain this, this arranger discipline part of you and how you approach projects and how you approach the day, leading with that and then following up with some significant influencing strengths? 
Okay. Um, so they kind of, the ranger, discipline, deliberateness, they all just kind of go together. I just, whatever needs to happen, you know, I, I make it happen. And if, <laughs> if it's not done, then I just do it. <laughs> and I just, it doesn't matter. It just has to get done. And so, um, um, and that includes, you know, thinking about details, um, taking care and when I, how I make decisions, um, thinking about, sometimes I do need some help with the details, but I also do think about it a lot. And maybe I communicate that, you know, with my head of school um, about how I can make those details happen. But I mean, that, that's my biggest thing is just see what needs to get done and just get it done. Whatever it takes, whatever needs to, to happen, it will get done. Um, and then the rule and the communication. Um, so, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I do like to meet new people. I do like to, you know, get to know people. Um, and then I just try to have a very um, positive, warm um, conversation with as many people as I can, you know, trying to keep it as positive as possible <laughs> when I talk to my teachers, things like that, even if even if they're not having the greatest day. <laughs> um, you know, just trying to um, make sure like we leave that conversation on a happy note. And make no mistake about it, Denali is a force. You cannot have <laughs> a range of discipline deliberative and not, you know, that's sleeves rolled up, head down, get stuff done kind of executing strengths right there. And at the same time, um, people follow her because she's got woo. And they also follow her because she's very articulate in the way she communicates um, what it is that it needs to be done. So, you know, for somebody like me, I've got to have somebody like her on my team. And then we are just even more of a force. Um, Amy, you still there? You're not in my screen. Amy? I'm here. So Amy, as you can see, is um, interestingly, uh, she's got both the woo and the communication as well. She's working in a really alternative environment with really interesting kids and absolutely just has the perfect strength set uh, to work where she is. Why is that, Amy? What is it about these top five strengths that make where you're working um, even more successful because of your superpowers? I'm still learning why, Robert, but I, I do have a strong sense of developer. And when we had that conversation, um, it's been a couple of weeks now, I, it really got me to thinking that um, this is how we folk, I, I've spent my entire career focusing on students and seeing that potential in them. Um, I currently work at an alternative uh, program. And really what we're trying to do is develop students to basically um, express their full potential in any way that they could possibly do. So I think that in, in terms of students, that's really clear that that's what I, my entire life mission has been on developing students and on helping them to realize their potential and helping them to focus on it. Um, positivity, you know, there's been so many things that have happened to me personally in my life that I have to be positive. Um, there's purpose and meaning in everything we do. And I try to get other people to see that no matter if it's um, something that may appear negative right now, what can we learn from it? What can we do with it? How can we make this change? And so that leads us to being creative, um, being able to try to address some of the problems in our community, some of the problems in our world, even when it doesn't seem like it's possible. For example, this COVID-19, um, I really just, I just loved the challenges that it brought out because there were so many positive things that came about it. And when people would start complaining about they have to do this or that, I just thought, wow, this is just an awesome opportunity for us to make those innovation <laughs> jumps now. <laughs> Let it throw everything else out the door. Let's just work on um, being creative and being able to do things that we've never been able to do before. So uh, just really individualizing. Um, learning, individualizing growth, 
and, and making that connection with people. I don't know too much about the woo though. I don't know <laughs> that um, just getting other people to go in, but, but definitely I, I see myself um, always trying to find the best in people and trying to work that. When I spoke with you, Amy, the woo came out. You, it, you, the thing about woo is you can cultivate it, you can hone it, you can become even stronger at it, but you got to have it. And the way you talked about what you do and how you nurture and grow kids that have not had success, um, you know, you also talked about the fact that people are constantly visiting your school, uh, whether it's from the legislature or other schools, and you woo them every time they visit because they leave and they want to come, right? That's what you told me. So you got, you got woo, even if you're humble about it. Um, if you look at Jillian, you can see that it's, it's rare, but she's got a strength in every domain and it's very rare. Uh, you would think that, oh, it just gets doled out evenly, but it's not. Uh, so Jillian, if you could just take a second and you're led by your woo, but you got the relation building, you got the achiever strength for executing, you've got the input strengths for strategic and then that wraps up with your view of the world and your view of people being very positive. Jillian, what did you learn from the, these top five and, and is who you are as a person? I mean, I think the thing that for me was the most valuable from our session was just knowing that I do have like a little bit and everything um, when it comes to like tackling different types of projects. I need to make sure that I've aligned myself with people who exist where I don't. Um, and so the big one that you reference is that like, I need a strong ideator, um, like in my life. And I had my partner take his strengths finder assessment the day after we had our session and his number one strength is ideation. And I think Whoa. that like, yeah, I mean, I'm very lucky. I didn't like think I didn't expect otherwise he's an entrepreneur. So that like totally makes sense. Um, but I think it's really interesting when I look at like our broader admin team, we have a lot of what I would assume are like executive strengths. And that was pretty low on my list. And I feel like my strength in that domain is more of like collection rather than getting done. You know, like the input I think is a little bit different than those who are strategic or have context or have learner. Um, so I think the thing that I've really learned is that my greatest strength that I really want to lean into a lot this year is working to be better at building a team around me and working with a team to get big things done. Um, I feel like I have known in the course of education that like I work well with others and I think I can support team dynamics. And so I think a big thing for me this year is going to be figuring out like who the right team for this project will be and making sure that I don't um, spend too much time working independently, especially like on the ideation part of this, like I'm going to need to rally some support. And I think that that's totally fine. Yeah. And, and especially now because people kind of gravitate towards you because of your empathy and positivity. They like being in your aura. They like being around you because you are positive and you do understand people. At the same time, Jillian has high expectations with her achiever strength. She doesn't do anything too quickly because she does need to look at the steps. And at the end of the day, she leads through Wu with a nice follow-up, a nice you know chaser of empathy and positivity. So she gets, she works a room, but people also kind of get, feel touched by her. Um, and Ken, you're still there, Ken? I can't see you in my screen. Yes, I am. Yeah, if, if, you, if you just have, I've, I've had a couple of sessions today and I did an hour with Ken and there is no question, Ken, right? That your mind is constantly, constantly ticking, 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 thinking, 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 digging, 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 digging. Is that right? Yes. You're led by analytic. You're led by deep thinking. Can you talk a little bit more about those strengths and of the analytical, the learner and the intellection, some pretty heavy strategic strengths? Yeah, I guess always trying to approach things from different angles, uh, figuring out what the pitfalls are, what the challenges are, and what the strengths are. Um, always seeking the learning. I think on the intellection side, um, you know, shying away from, you know, 
uh, conversations that are pretty low level and, uh, <laughs> you know, really pursuing, you know, people that I talk to or surrounding myself with people that are pretty intense uh, when talking about mathematical things and te technology things. Um, and, you know, I, I think even just having my principal this morning talking about football and, and you know, he, he totally had to explain everything to me. I, I had no idea what he was talking about. Even though I, I played it, you know, as a sport and everything, but uh, he, he already knows that's the kind of stuff I don't really talk about. I think that pretty much sums up what, I, what I'm always doing. And just could you talk for a second about when you're working with kids and you have this achiever strength, high expectations, uh, you've had high expectations for yourself, but coupled with the individualization relation building strength that you you see every kid as a lump of clay that's gonna become a Michelangelo a statue. Um, how do you merge those two together, your achiever strength with your individualization strength when working with kids? Yeah, I think um, when I first started off in education, it was very elitist. You know, my principal back then had to sit me down and say, you know, this is, this is um, you got a different world right now and really just being conscious of that fact and then walking into situations where you don't get to choose who you're working with um, and figuring out what are the individual strengths um, and, and building on those strengths and improving on their, their their challenges that they face i think that's really become the forefront of what i do um, you know not I think we're all teachers. Um, you always wish in that classroom that you, if you could just get rid of these three kids, things would be so much better. And then when you do run into an administrator that actually does that for you, and then you, two weeks later, you find out, man, there's three more kids that emerged that you would wish. <laughs> to. And I think that's what you just have to do when you're, you're working with kids and, and people in general is um, you don't get to, a lot of times, or for the most part, you don't get to pick your team. Um, and you just have to figure out how are you going to get this these these this team to work together and um, be at that optimum operating at an optimum level? Thanks, Ken. And I wish we were in the same room together right now because these conversations uh, like this are very powerful. And when we're together in person, it, it's even more powerful. Um, Josh, I knew uh, no surprise that we're going to run out of time. And so uh, I don't wanna rush through the rest. Um, I'm gonna show a couple more slides, but I, I, we're just not gonna get to everything, Josh, and, and okay. be respectful of everybody's time. No, this has been brilliant, Robert. Um, this, um... So what I do with every team, no matter who I work with, I do kind of compile the data. And now you can see that if this was your team, whether it's your teacher team, your admin team, um, you can kind of see uh, the strength of your team, and you can also see at any part of a project or a discussion where you'll gravitate. And in this particular team, we know that our executors, we need to be very conscious of them because we need to bring them out. There are fewer of them in this particular team. But you can see that uh, as a group of administrators, we're fairly well balanced, but what's great is that we are highly strategic as a team, but we are constantly thinking about people and feelings uh, on so many different levels because you've got 35% strategic and 33% relation building, which is pretty awesome. Um, I also always do this for fun uh, to create a world word cloud of our team, which can go up on the, on the wall and I can tell you for sure, I have never ever uh, seen Wu so big on any team than, than this, uh, which is pretty interesting. But you can kind of get a, an idea of where we are strong, but let's remember that we've got one context person. So we need to make sure that relying on her when we need context for any given decision. Um, we've got one futurist uh, in the group. Doesn't mean that you're not all futurists, but the futuristic person um, 
is kind of really rallying the troops when it comes to thinking about the future and so on. We've got one activator. Uh, so let's just make sure that we're conscious of uh, where we're very strong and where we need to, to think about uh, the others. Josh, I've got a case study, but I really don't think yeah. we'll do it justice. Yeah, this is a perfect stopping point, Robert, and we can, um, um, this is terrific. And actually, if it's okay, Robert, what we can do is we can take screenshots. Um, you and I can work together on that and put them up in the activity feed um, on the platform so that it's well, available and under course resources as well. well the method to the madness, though, is I would love to have a little bit of strengths in every time we meet. So sure. um, next time, if we could just do about like one of the, the other activities. So we keep the strengths alive yep. um, with everything we do. Yeah, I hope you guys found that that session uh, worthwhile and you could kind of imagine what that would be like with your team, what that would be like with your teachers, the kind of conversations you have. Um, I did this with a group of teachers uh, in California and their feedback was, wow, that was professional development. And we just talked about ourselves and it was so refreshing to actually get to know each other. Um, and thank you, by the way, for everybody that participated and volunteered. That was just awesome. Um, I, I really appreciate your input. Back Fabulous. To you, thank you, Robert. Okay. So we're almost done. Let me just go to the last slide here. Um, so got that done. So to close off today, um, we just want to talk about next steps um, to get ready for our class, which comes up, our second class, which comes up on September 21st at 4 p.m. Um, again, uh, the I'm super grateful to all of you for how quickly um, you have adapted to the What School Could Be platform and that you all found the Zoom link and you know where everything is now. Um, one of the things that we do want to do is, since we had just a very brief conversation about the HB article, um, there is a very lively conversation that's broken out in the activity feed. If you haven't had a chance to chime in on that, that would be terrific. Um, and I will be um, uh, jumping in to comment on your comments as well. So to get ready for next time, we wanna do a couple of things. Um, one is that you're going, to, if you haven't already, um, you're gonna begin reading your course text, which is Making It uh, by Stephanie Malia Kraus. Um, if you could read the, the preface, um, the forward by Karen Pittman, the forward by Maria Flynn, and the introduction, that would be great. Um, and we will um, set up some time when we get together on the 21st to begin talking about that. Um, and we're also gonna be looking forward to that opportunity when you get to actually interact with the author, um, Stephanie Malia, because she's very definitely on board and is already looking forward to meeting you all. Um, you also, as we mentioned before, are going to be um, doing um, some blogging. And so part of our session next time on the 21st is gonna be spent with someone named Jan Iwase. She's a retired a principal from Daniel K. Inouye Elementary School. Um, she was one of the very earliest principals to begin blogging and to uh, begin sharing 